Aloha everyone, this is a Highway 132 independent temperature analysis. The 2018 eruption in Lower Puna on a big island in Hawaii covered Highway 132 in several areas. The lower part of the road was covered in several flows that first cover that Bay of Kapoho, and later on overflows of the channel covered parts of the road. Eventually the channel was diverted to the south, and we have multiple channels covering that section of the roadway now. There's about 1.7 miles worth of roadway that has been covered by dozens of feet worth of lava. These roadways are highly variable in the height of the lava flows going from steep channel walls to relatively low spots where lava barely reached. In June 2019, Hawaii County began a federal highway construction project to reestablish Highway 132, both upper and lower sections, equaling about 3.2 miles worth of roadway to recover total. Three months into the construction project, delays have been encountered in the lower section of the lava flows near Green Mountain, the Kapoho Crater. This section of the roadway is characterized by multiple kinds of lava flows. There's a lot of rubble on the top of the flow, but a very thick, dense core inside the channels that was draining out. And it's very dense, very gas poor, and it seems like it pulverizes into a dust when it's being worked on in construction. It's within this area that some high temperatures have been recorded by USGS HVO and the Department of Public Works. On August 7, 2019, HVO reported temperatures over 750 degrees Fahrenheit. And less than a week later, Department of Public Works encountered temperatures exceeding 550 degrees Fahrenheit. The maximum temperature for a roadway paved in Hawaii is 64 degrees Celsius or 147 degrees Fahrenheit. Obviously, these temperatures, as reported, exceed the thresholds for the specifications for asphalt. So we went ahead and went down there to investigate ourselves. We're looking down 132 towards Four Corners. The road bottom is at 118. There's a road blank. Some hot spots are close to 150. There's a 160 now. When we're coming into rock, it's very, 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 very hot there. 626 degrees Fahrenheit. Just the one rock. If we look below on the ground, it's 104, which is just the ambient sun on the dirt. 150. We'll pan around. It's 120. Looking back up 132, back towards the Kipuka. The roadway is at 109. And there's a far bank once again coming around at 130. 140. So yeah, that's the exposed edge over there of the lava channel. And the wall they've cut into the lava channel. Coming back over here to this fat part of the channel wall, it's 170. The tall part over there gets as high as 270. We went ahead and tested the same hotspot identified by the thermal imagery to better understand what its true temperatures are. So we put a thermometer leads down into the crack to see how hot that area was, and then a second lead just on top of the surface to see how much that, uh, dissip that heat dissipated over a little bit of amount of space. As you can see, temperatures exceed 880 degrees Fahrenheit in this one particular area, but that heat then soon dissipates as soon as you're outside of the crack. The one spot on the surface is still too hot for asphalt, but it's really a localized spot on the edge of the roadway itself. On this drone-mounted thermal imagery, you can see the white spots are the hot edges of the road, and the center spots are a little bit cooler. You can really see how the heat's concentrating on the edges. This is really a minimum temperature, since the drone is looking across some distance of air to get these readings. The beginning part of the video shows hotter temperatures as we fly over the lava channel, while the later part of the video shows cooler temperatures around 95 degrees Fahrenheit as we fly over fill material in an old little valley. Here's some aerial footage of the lower section of Highway 132. This is one of the fill areas between two lava channels. You can see how this area has been brought up to grade, whereas the lava channel itself, including the lava inside the channel, not just the channel walls, was also ripped down several feet 
for the new roadway to go through. You can see the light colored parts of the channel wall as the fill that's hardened in place, really gas poor, very solid, very dense. That's the part that's very difficult for the machinery to break up and it's remaining hottest the longest. In this lower section of the channel, there are still spots that need to be brought down to grade. Very dense rock that must be chipped or ripped out of the ground. And other areas where they still need to widen the roads to meet the required specs. Highway 132 is being redone on the previous egress for the roadway. That means that it takes the path that it took previously. That path happens to be some of the hardest areas to go through from the new lava flows, including multiple crosses across the Fisher 8 channel. Closest to Four Corners, Highway 132 is established entirely within the lava channel, and it rises out of the channel, across the banks, back in a, over another bank, across another channel before entering Akipuka. The plan and the timetable for Highway 132 is pretty ambitious attempting to create over three miles of federally coded highway in under five months. In order to qualify for full reimbursement from the federal highways, work must be completed by October 5th. However, delays have been encountered which have led the Department of Public Works to request an extension of three months in order to complete construction. The only section of road being restored is Highway 132 to Four Corners and North to Government Beach Road. This lower section of Highway 132 was covered with flows from early June through mid-July when the rerouting of the channel occurred all the way into early August as the eruption ended. Here's a USGS thermal image compilation showing the path of lava establishing a channel to Kapoho and rerouting itself south around Pu Kapoho towards the ocean. Where the lava flows diverted in the late stages of the eruption create some of the thickest areas which lava has to be ripped down into for a road to be established. This is a USGS lava thickness map that shows the lower part of the Fisher 8 lava channel near Kapoho Crater and the Highway 132 superimposed upon it. From our survey, some of the hottest spots are not the thickest spots, however they are among the densest. What we observe is that the road retains the most heat where it's cut down farthest, deepest, into the core of the flow, in some places a few feet down. However, soon after the cut has been done and grading is performed, it seems that the surface of the road is actually quite cool, below temperatures that would compromise uh, pavement such as PG64-16. Those problem spots are really spotty, and probably 95% of the road is below the threshold temperature that would sustain the asphalt. We'll leave you guys with some before and after images of the eruption on this road and its restoration over the last nine months. Mm -hmm.